What's going on, Redskins Nation? I am Redskins Fans Unite, and uh, I'm back with yet another video. Second day in a row of the video. I don't remember the last time that's happened, if it has happened at all for me. Um, just you guys left some great support for me on the last video, so that motivated me to make another one today. And uh, I figured, why not? Because um, there's there's been some talk lately about Ryan Kerrigan and uh, the Redskins <clears throat> or, you know, the Washington football team. I hope you guys don't mind me saying the old name. If you do, please let me know and we'll see. We'll see what happens. But any, this isn't about the name. This is about Ryan Kerrigan, who is now the franchise's all-time sack leader, who there were rumors that we should have traded him before week one against the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, let me tell you why, for multiple reasons, why that isn't true. Ryan Kerrigan has been here for, this is his 10th year in the league now, because he's been here since 2011, and uh, now it's 10 seasons with Washington, and uh, 93 sacks, that's already averaging over, what, yeah, 9.3 sacks per season, if you want to, if you want to divvy that up, divide that up, whatever, and he's already on pace. He's already tied for the league lead in sacks. I mean, it's week one. We never, we don't even know what's going to happen at night, if anyone's going to get more than two sacks. But only three guys so far, and Ryan's one of them, have two sacks so far. And, uh, you know, and it's more than about that. Even if Ryan doesn't put up, you know, a career high in sacks throughout the rest of the season, there's a very strong chance that at least one of the guys on this defensive line is going to rack up over 15. And part of it, I will say the 4-3 has been paying off big time because finally letting guys like this that have been stuck in a system that has forced them to drop back in zone blitzes and whatnot, which is, which I mean, it can be, it has its benefits, but it obviously with, with a unit like us, we are just more natural for a 4-3 and you can tell guys like Chase Young coming off the edge even guys like Ryan Anderson that have been here for a few years. And it helps with guys like Deron Payne in the middle, Jonathan Allen. You, I can just keep naming names because it's just helping us so much as a unit. But back to what I was saying before, a lot of these guys that I've mentioned, they're young guys. And Ryan Kerrigan, he's he's the lone veteran, really, in this defensive unit. I mean, you could say John Bostic, too, but... Uh, that's a little bit different since Ryan Kerrigan's technically no longer a linebacker like he was forced to be. He's now a pure defensive end, pure pass rusher, because that's what this system calls for him. And it's and he had he had just a dominating performance. The entire D line did. I just can't stop the the whole fan base, you know. It's probably the biggest takeaway from week one, aside from well, <laughs> you know, I'm going to call them more squared for as long as they keep playing like they do. Jimmy Moreland and Fabian Moreau. This is just ironic that the first four letters of the last name spell out the word more. But that's not important. I mean, it is, it's important. But Ryan Kerrigan being the veteran, as I was saying, it's helped a lot of these young guys to really get familiar with the NFL. And while we haven't, necessarily been seen we saw it a little bit with Montez Sweat last year whose name I surprisingly didn't mention yet but we saw it with Sweat we've been seeing it for plenty of years with Deron Payne and Matt Ioannidis and now I feel like I'm this front seven it's really just coming together once and for all it's been a real build-up and while I would have thought that this I don't I would say rebuild year but I would have thought it would have been more of a rebuild year for us that technically can be said more truly about the last three or four years because now you see these guys, at least so far, I'm not trying to make general generalizations about the season, but I don't see it slowing down very soon because, well, we got a guy that likes to squirm around in the pocket coming up, Kyler Murray, who had a fantastic performance against the 49ers. It's not going to be easy to deal with him, but this defensive line with their speed and with their grit that they showed, I think they're going to be able to, you know, make an impact. I'm not going to be able to, I'm not predicting the game yet. That'll come later in the week. 
But I'm just saying this, Ryan Kerrigan, it, it, this defensive line has a lot of upside. And I think ultimately, while everyone deserves credit, Jack Del Rio deserves credit, Ryan Kerrigan is ultimately, it's ultimately his, It's it's been all building up till now for him. And it's really the first time that he's able to truly lead a defensive unit in general. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys again for that awesome support in the last video. And I'm hoping that you guys will like my consistent uploads and whatnot. So thank you guys all. And if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. I am Redskins Fans Unite, and I will see you guys later. Hail.